NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft has been sent back its first message from interstellar space. This is a discovery made by Voyager 2 that is far too often forgotten, yet it stands as one of the most important findings in the history of planetary exploration. In August 1989, after a 12-year journey through the solar system, NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft reached Neptune. It was the first and so far the only spacecraft to ever visit this icy giant. But what truly surprised scientists was not just Neptune itself, it was what Voyager 2 found when it flew past Neptune's largest moon, Triton. Triton was expected to be just another frozen dead world at the very edge of the solar system, cold, silent, and geologically inactive. Instead, what Voyager 2 revealed stunned everyone. Triton turned out to be one of the strangest and most fascinating objects ever studied in our solar system. So what did Voyager 2 actually see? As Voyager 2 approached Triton, cameras on board began sending back images that changed planetary science forever. First, the spacecraft revealed dark geysers erupting from the surface. These weren't ordinary volcanic eruptions of molten rock. Instead, Voyager 2 discovered cryovolcanoes, volcanoes that erupt with frozen nitrogen gas and dust. Plumes were seen shooting up as high as 8 kilometers, drifting sideways in Triton's thin atmosphere before settling back onto the icy surface. This was completely unexpected. At a temperature of about minus 235 degrees Celsius, Triton is one of the coldest places in the solar system. Nobody thought such an environment could sustain active geology, and yet, there it was, proof that even at the frozen edge of the solar system, moons can be alive and dynamic. Voyager 2 also revealed Triton's unique surface features. Instead of being heavily cratered like most old moons, Triton's landscape looked relatively young and fresh. Large areas were smooth, suggesting that the surface had been renewed by internal processes, possibly linked to heat generated inside the moon. Another shock came from Triton's orbit. The moon moves in a retrograde orbit, it circles Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation. No large moon in the solar system does this. The only explanation is that Triton didn't form around Neptune. Instead, it was likely captured by Neptune's gravity long ago, possibly after forming as a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, much like Pluto. So why was this so important? Why should we care about geysers of frozen nitrogen on a distant moon? First, Triton showed us that geological activity is not limited to warm or Earth-like worlds. Even in the deep cold, processes powered by internal heat or tidal forces can keep a world alive. This was one of the first big clues that icy moons like Europa, Enceladus, and now Triton could have liquid oceans beneath their frozen crusts. And where there are oceans, there is at least a chance for life. Second, the discovery of cryovolcanism completely changed how scientists thought about the solar system. Before Voyager 2, most expected outer moons to be inert, like ancient rocks drifting in space. After Triton, planetary science had to expand its imagination. Suddenly even small distant bodies could be active worlds with complex stories. Third, Triton provided a preview of Pluto. Remember, this was 1989, long before the New Horizons mission flew past Pluto in 2015. When Voyager 2 showed Triton's surface of frozen nitrogen and methane, scientists realized that Pluto might look very similar. In a way, Triton gave us our first up-close look at what Kuiper Belt objects might be like, and it turned out to be remarkably accurate. Finally, Triton reminded us that our solar system is full of surprises. Even after decades of exploration, the most remarkable worlds are often the ones we least expect. Today, Triton is considered one of the most intriguing candidates for future exploration. That thin nitrogen atmosphere Voyager 2 detected, combined with evidence for internal heat, suggests that beneath Triton's crust, there could be a subsurface ocean of liquid water. If such an ocean exists, it would be kept warm by tidal heating, as Triton's odd orbit slowly shifts and flexes its interior. This makes Triton potentially habitable, not for humans but perhaps for microbial life. Imagine tiny ecosystems thriving under kilometers of ice completely cut off from the surface yet sustained by energy and chemistry deep inside. This possibility puts Triton in the same category as Europa and Enceladus, icy moons where hidden oceans may hold the conditions for life. The difference is that Triton is even stranger, a captured world, retrograde, active, and unique. Voyager 2, after its encounter with Triton, didn't stop. It continued its journey outward and in November 2018 it crossed the heliopause, the boundary where the solar wind from our sun gives way to the environment of interstellar space. Today, Voyager 2 is more than 20 billion kilometers away from Earth still sending faint signals back to NASA, 
its instruments, though old and limited, are providing the only direct measurements of interstellar space ever collected by humanity. Every bit of data it sends is precious. But its time is running out. By the end of this decade, Voyager 2's power supply will likely no longer be able to keep its instruments running. That means the images of Triton it captured in 1989 will remain the only close-up pictures we have of that mysterious moon for the foreseeable future. The discoveries Voyager 2 made at Triton left scientists hungry for more. That's why NASA once proposed a mission called Trident, a dedicated spacecraft that would have flown past Neptune and Triton in the 2030s. Trident could have answered many of the lingering questions about Triton's atmosphere, geology, and possible ocean. Unfortunately, funding went elsewhere and Trident was not selected. Still, interest remains high. Many planetary scientists argue that a return to Neptune and Triton should be one of NASA's top priorities for the next decades. Such a mission would not only revisit Triton but also give us our first modern look at Neptune itself, something we haven't had since Voyager 2. Imagine what today's technology could reveal. High-resolution maps, detailed chemistry of Triton's surface, even instruments capable of detecting the composition of plumes if cryovolcanoes are still active. It could be a game-changer in our search for habitable environments beyond Earth. It's easy to overlook Triton because so much attention goes to worlds like Mars, Europa, or Titan. But Voyager 2 showed us that Triton is just as deserving of curiosity. It is. The only large moon with a retrograde orbit, proof of a dramatic cosmic capture. One of the coldest places in the solar system, yet still geologically alive. A world with active cryovolcanoes unlike anything seen before. A likely ocean world hiding secrets beneath its frozen crust. And perhaps one of the closest analogs we have to Pluto and the mysterious Kuiper Belt beyond. When you think about it, Voyager 2's flyby of Triton was not just another planetary encounter. It was a turning point that forced us to rethink what distant icy moons could be. It expanded our definition of what it means for a world to be active, complex, and potentially habitable. So, as Voyager 2 drifts ever deeper into interstellar space, it leaves behind a legacy that is still shaping science today, and perhaps its most overlooked gift is the glimpse it gave us of Triton, an alien world on the edge of the solar system that turned out to be alive with mystery. One day humanity will return to Triton, but until then, the forgotten images of Voyager 2 remain our only window into one of the strangest worlds we have ever seen.